Welcome to another episode of Behind the Visor with Big Meech, presented by The Battle's End. I'm here with one of my favorite teammates, former teammates, uh, Greedy. Greedy, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Appreciate good. you coming on here, man. For sure. Yeah, uh, just wanted to have you on for one, you know, uh, coming in, you know, guy in the locker room that I always used to chop it up with, always used to kind of just hold each other accountable and, um, you know, just ce celebrate the good good and bad moments, you know, just chop it up. So I just wanted to, you know, have you have you on here as my next guest. So I appreciate you coming on here, man. Appreciate you, bro. You no, know, uh first of all, you know, why why do they call you greedy, bro? Um, I got it from uh Greedy Williams, actually. But nobody didn't really call me greedy until my senior year of high school. I had nine interceptions and then it just stuck with me and stuff. So I was like, Yeah, that's what I want to be. Yeah. You uh, you ever had a chance to reach out to him or uh, meet up with we meet up with him? Yeah, yeah. Uh camp sessions and stuff like that. He seen me compete and like, you know, if you had camp sessions, you be, like if you a player, you like get around the best players yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, but it, it was nothing serious though. I remember um, just being on Twitter one day and I seen uh, I seen like a little cut up <laughs> of you uh, when you was at a camp. I think it was LSU camp, mm -hmm. and you was uh, but ain't gonna lie, you was you was strapping strapping down uh, speed turning quick. So mm -hmm. you know it was it was just it's crazy that you know that that's one of the one of the guys that you looked up to the most. Yeah. Um, so you just just want to talk about you know the, the hard work and your 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 journey to coming to Florida State. You know, mm -hmm. uh, out of high school, you know, you went to, to Louisville first, but you know, what was your decision kind of going there, and then uh, obviously ending up choosing to come to Florida State. Yeah, I ended up at Louisville because I committed real late. I committed like a week before signing day, so I got a job by everybody else, and uh, they was like one of the only schools um, that was willing to take me. That was Power Five, so I just took a chance and went there. Went there, did two years, um, had some good ups and downs. And then when I got in the portal, uh, Coach Will was recruiting me in high school. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to go to Auburn, but he ended up dropping me because I was taking too long. And then he texted me, and then it was like a no-brainer. So, yeah. Yeah, it was you, a no-brainer. You feel like the high school recruiting is like stressful? Like what, what What was the reason you kind of took so long to make your decision coming out of high school? Um, I don't think it was stressful for me because, like, for me, it wasn't as political. Like, you know, um, it was more like like under the, you know, under the radar, for yeah. real. Um, I had some good schools, but, like, it wasn't like, you know, I was a three-star, you know, small, low-profile guy, so it wasn't stressful for me. It was, like, you know, easy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the same way for me. Uh, you know, I early I was getting recruited by a lot of schools, but I wanted to kind of take my time. Schools with, schools didn't really want to wait. Mm -hmm. They wanted, they kind of want to know what they, what they was going to get. So mm -hmm. I ended up uh, coming to Charlotte, mm -hmm. like, way late, way late in the process, and, you know, ended up all working out in the end, but... Um, you know, my decision to transfer from there was kind of just, um, you know, I felt like I was one of the, one of the only guys on the team. Uh, it was a couple of guys like, uh, that were, that had the, the will to win and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, it was kind of frustrating, you know, putting all the work in and just not being successful mm -hmm. on the field. And, uh, obviously it ran into coach Atkins when I was there and he had, had a chance to, to come back and re reunite with him at Florida state. So, um, once, once I seen him come to Florida State, I knew I kind of wanted to come here. Uh, so, you know, what was that like kind of decision you, you chose Florida State amongst other schools in the portal? Just yeah, um, the tradition, the culture. Obviously, Florida State wasn't where we at now, but um, I think Coach Novell did a good job of, you know, influencing me good enough to get me to believe that you know. What he said he did, he did do. Yeah. So um, I took his word and, yeah, we look back on it. He, he did everything he said. No, no doubt, man, no doubt. And, you know, you're definitely respected by, you know, by me and a lot of guys on the team just, just for being one of the hardest workers. You know, where does that kind of come from? Yeah, um, it's just an edge that I always had. Um, always being, like, the smaller guy. Always being, like, um, like, you know, like, if you walk in the room, I wouldn't pass the eye test type of guy, you know? Like, so, you know, that kind of stuff just kept me, like, motivated, driven to, you know, do stuff behind the scenes to keep me, you know, to keep me keep up with other guys and stuff like that. Yeah, no doubt. I always say, like, offensive line and DB is kind of similar, bro, because, you know, you're going backwards in, in an unnatural position, like, mm -hmm. especially, like, pass protecting and, you know, DB, mm -hmm. you know, trying to, trying to play, like, catch technique and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what what makes like a great DB or like you know you play a lot of nickel, but what's the difference between you know playing the outside corner and playing playing the inside like nickel? Because I mean, offensive line, I, was, I had Darius on there a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we kind of just talked about the different positions interiorly. But like mm -hmm. from a defensive back position, you know, what's the difference between uh, you know playing outside corner and playing nickel and then being Boundary. elite at it? Oh. Yeah, 
Uh, I think I think it's just you know different guys could cover in different space. Um, most guys that cover good go to the slot to the field. Most guys, you know, that don't really transition that well. Or bigger bodies go to the boundary. Um, I think I fit the category of more to the field part, but I have played boundary. But obviously, like I'll be more productive to the field. And uh, I think like a good DB is just a guy who could cover. Um, a guy who got good feet, who just transition well, a twitchy guy, don't got to be very fast. More more technical than anything, really. Uh, that's really, like, the key thing, for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, it a, is it, like, hard to find, like, a mix of both? Because, like, you know, like, you can be, you can have all the technique in the yeah. world, but if it's a guy who runs by you, you know, at that point, you just got to, you know, rely on your natural given speed and stuff like that. Like, how, how challenging is that? I think it's the opposite. I think you could have all the speed in the world but not be technical. Mm. Yeah, I think it's the opposite. There's a lot of guys um, who very fast and stuff like that but don't have the technical part and lose and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, technique don't have to just be, like, um, like press technique and stuff like that. It could be, like, easy stuff like three-step break, stuff like that, transitioning out of breaks, pad level, like, all that stuff connect together. So there's a lot of guys who um, struggle with stuff like that. But, you know, they make up for what – Length, speed, strength, stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, is it a favorite route that you uh, like like to try to intercept, or you can kind of tell from the like coming from the slot what 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 routes you're gonna get? Yeah, or, um, I think the easiest one of the easiest routes to like kind of get a feel for is like digs. The hardest might, might be a slant because mm. you uh most most slot guys outside leverage for. I mean, here, I'm, like, here at Florida State, we play at four. Most guys in the country be at, like, nine, seven to nine yards. Yeah. That's hard as hell. But, um, yeah, I think slants kind of kind of hard to get to, especially on that outside shoulder. Yeah. Uh, I feel like on offense, you know, we'll, we'll try and set guys up on the outside. If I'm an offense corner, I'm going to hit them slants, 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 and then, mm-hmm. boom, slant and go. Mm-hmm. And, like, and that usually, you know, strikes up the band. So it's just like. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's definitely challenging. I feel like DB, you gotta stay disciplined, stay with same with offensive line. You know, you might get hit uh, by a spin move, speed move, or someone might set up speed, 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 and hit you with speed to power. You mm-hmm. know, and it's just like, like you say, you gotta have the right technique, stay disciplined. Every play is its own play. Mm-hmm. So you know, but um, you know, you you uh, in high school, you know, obviously you did a bunch of camps and stuff like that. Um, but you you went to high school with Fat too, who's now on the team. Talk about your y'all's relationship, and you know, now did y'all did y'all know that y'all was gonna be at the same? Do you ever have, have an idea that y'all, y'all was gonna be at the same school? No, no. Um, he was coming here. I was going to Louisville. I was like, like we gonna play each other. Yeah, that was more exciting than anything. But um, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. I had a dream. I had a. I, I don't want to get too much into it, but I had a dream that it was going to kind of end up being like that, though, um, when I had a feeling that I was coming here, though. Why? Just... All right, I, I'll tell you what happened. Yeah. So, I was at Louisville. This was this was a uh, Clemson week. We uh, we could This would have been the first time we would have beat Clemson in school history. Uh, This was the last job of the game. We was on, like, five-yard line or something like that. And we basically went four and out. They stopped us all four plays. And I was like in a real like bad place, like depressed, like yeah. mad. And then um, like maybe like two nights later, I had a dream like um, like at at when we was at Louisville, like you could wear like anything around the building, like it didn't have to be Louisville. So I was wearing a Florida State shirt around the building, but nobody wasn't saying nothing about it though. Like it wasn't like a big deal. And then it was such a coincidence because like when we was about to play uh, when we was about to play Florida State. In 21, they used to play the wall chant at practice the whole week. So Chris Adderfield came up to me. He was like, uh, he was like, yeah, you ready? You know, you ready to play in dope? I was like, man, I always wanted to play in dope. And he looked at me kind of weird. Like, yeah. But I really did always want, like, I didn't yeah. want to play for FSU, but, like, I always wanted to play in dope. Yeah, of course, like, of course. Now nah, I'm here. So yeah, especially like, growing up. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy, though. Mm-hmm. And you, sometimes dreams always come, come true, bro. For especially sure. you put the work in for it, you know. But it's funny though that y'all end up on the same team. How's y'all relationship now? Uh, like you know, motivating and just pushing each other now. Like that y'all on the same team. Yeah, it's good. Um, I think we both real transparent, which is the best thing. And you know, it is what it is. You know, if you do good, you do good. If it ain't good enough, then you gotta get better. Yeah, 
No doubt. So your first year here was 22, right? Yeah. Okay. So that was yeah. same same with me. Mm-hmm. Um, we came in together. Uh, you know, obviously, um, starting off the season, we started off four and zero, and then we played Wake Forest at home. You know, and that game, you know, I I ain't had my best game. I actually had my first penalty here, at Florida State. I had um, uh, damn false false start in the fourth quarter. It's crazy because you know, coming off the sideline. You know, we t- I'm telling guys, you know, mm-hmm. hey, come, hey, come on, guys, you know, mm-hmm. uh, let's go. We got it. You know, lock in, make sure we listen to the snap count, and then boom. First play out the huddle, bro. Fall started. Just, mm-hmm. and I just remember looking to the sideline, Coach Novell, just like, yeah, like, you know. But I was just, I was just, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I ain't played my best. But I remember, um, you know, uh, watching on defense, you know, we had a, it was a chance on third down, and they threw they threw, threw the ball to you, mm-hmm. uh, and you know you almost came came through with a pick that mm-hmm. would you know put us back in position to go with the game, but uh, you know the, I think they ended up converting on on third down, mm-hmm. and a lot of guys kind of on the team, you know, I would say didn't didn't like believe in you as as, as much you mm-hmm. know as they, as, they, as they did in the beginning, you know, kind of talk about you know how that felt, you know, and then towards the end of the season, you had a pick versus Miami. Um, we put you in the game versus uh versus uh Florida, and locking up Ricky Pearsall, you know who's having a big half. I think in the second half didn't have any receptions. So, so just kind of talk about you know just the, just the, the fall and the rise, you know. Yeah. Um. That Wake Forest game was bad. Like I was looking at the film. Like I went in there the next day. Well, I was already mad after the game. Yeah. And then. Like my dad was like we was I you know I stayed at champ so I was just walking back home he was like you know what's wrong I was like shit like we lost because of me like he was like you know they had a lot of points in that game you know that could like that determined the result of the game like your yeah. play wasn't just you know but at the end of the day when my opportunity came I didn't make the play so yeah. you know a big part of it is on me I took responsibility for it but um I went in there like first of all I went on social media everybody texted me and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't worried about that part because I already knew what I was saying to myself before that even happened. Like, mm-hmm. and then I was just kept on watching the film, kept watching on the film, and I ain't like cry hard. Like I ain't cry, but I cry about like damn, like you know. But you know, yeah, I ain't take it personal though. I was just like, you know, people go feel they feel regardless. Like they still had people support me on the team after that, and they had people that was like, you know, oh, you know, you know how it go. Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, we still got another game next week. And the week after that, and the week after that, so that was really my thought process. But like you know, my con- my process was really like one when I see him again, I'm that's gonna be a totally yeah. different story. And two, I can't never let, like I can't let that happen again. Like I would have rather me just like drop the pick or something, but him catching it, like nah, yeah, yeah, nah, it's it's tough, bro. Because like like you say, we put so much work in, and you know, uh, in mo in the game when the moments don't don't go away, but. I felt the same way you felt. Mm-hmm. Like it was um so I had the false start in the fourth quarter of that game and then earlier early in the game, Treshawn Ward, he fumbled the ball mm-hmm. and we had a backside combo on the outside zone. So basically we were just trying to cut off the backside mm-hmm. and climb up to the linebacker. So uh, me and Jazz both had cut the guy off so so fast mm-hmm. that we both ended up going up to the door. linebacker and so he came back door mm-hmm. and you know, D- Coach Atkins always tells us defensive linemen are the ones that cause us fumbles. Mm-hmm. And so he came and punched the ball out, and that just kind of started the spiral of uh, he had he had a uh, was it Treshawn fumbled that that play, and then another play, um, you know, a linebacker came and kind of shot the gap, and Jay Travis fumbled, and I both I I really took that person in myself, like you say, just because it's like you put a lot of work in, you don't want to be the guy to let the team down, especially mm-hmm. in those moments, but mm-hmm. you know, you kind of just gotta like you say, you got the next game, you, you gotta keep going, uh, so. You know, I, um, but. Like when when that happened, I literally like I literally heard the whole stadium. It was crazy though. It was like, oh, like I heard it just like yeah. just that fast. But um, Florida game. I mean, obviously I went on, on a stretch with the Syracuse and stuff. But like Florida game, that what that was twenty two year, right? Yeah, yeah, 22. that was my favorite game because like. Me and KP, that was like the game. Like me and KP really got like close. Like we we had a good relationship, but like like he told me later on down the line, like that was the game that really made him like, you know, really like make us like real close. Like, um, cause like you know, obviously he didn't have like the best first half, 
And I went up to him when he was coming up to me. I'm like, bro, like, just look at it like practice. Like, we already have a lot of people at practice in spring. Yeah. I'm like, bro, just, like, look at it like practice, bro, but, like, just a lot more people, like. And he went out there, and stuff still wasn't going well. And then, like, he was on the sideline, like, quiet. Like, you know you, like, you know how you do bad? You do that, that blank stare mm-hmm. on the bench just looking, like, zoned out. And I went up to him. I was like, bro, like, he not going to catch another ball. Bro, I got you, bro. I promise I got you. And then I got on the headset with Coach Wood, and he was like, lock that one up. I don't want him catching another ball. No, yeah. no, you got him the rest of the night. I don't care what you got to do. I don't want him catching another ball. Yeah. And then after that, it was really like, oh, for real. Yeah, yeah. bro. It's, uh, I mean, it's a, especially in moments like that when, you, you know, you need your teammates and you see you just being able to recognize, hey, like, next play, I got you. Like, mm-hmm. O-line, we fist bump every play. Mm-hmm. Next play, every play is its own play. So I know that encouragement definitely, uh, definitely, you know, I'm sure it helped y'all relationship yeah, a for crazy sure. amount. Um, but I mean, I know that was a good feeling, bro. Just especially going, you know, from from not feeling so low in the beginning of the season, and you know, ending the season on a high. And obviously, we beat Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. One was on, a, I think it was like a six game, seven game win streak after that. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, and going into last year, you know, just being in such a like competitive uh, DB room, you know, playing mm-hmm. with uh, with Jamie in 22. Uh, obviously, we got Renardo, uh, J Dub, and, and last year, and all those guys. You know, talk about that some some of the lessons that you you've been able to learn from some of those guys. And you know, you said Jamie, yeah, Jamie Robinson in twenty two. Oh, twenty two. Oh, my yeah, fault, my fault, my fault. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Now that was a veteran group. Um. I think Jamie was already what like two two years in the program already. Yeah. Three. J Dub was in, I think four already. Dude was been here. Keem, like, that was, like, a real veteran group. Like, last year we had a veteran group, but last year was, like, a real veteran group. Like. Yeah. So, obviously, um, I want to say you wouldn't have to do as much. Like, when you got a real good veteran group, like, obviously you still got to work hard and stuff, but, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you ain't got to do, like, the most or kill yourself over because, like, you got a lot of guys who done been there, experienced it. Um, So, it was really just, like, hey, yo, okay, bet type deal. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it wasn't more, like, Oh, I gotta explain this and explain this and explain Just this. Just quick though. communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes life a lot easier for sure. Mm-hmm. So, what are some things that you're looking forward to this year, man? Just you know, putting on putting on film and some some goals and expectations that you have for yourself. Yeah, um, I just want to be a better teammate. Uh, make more plays, obviously. Um, I want to be more physical this year, but that come with like getting your body bigger and stuff, obviously. Coach mm. Storm's getting you right, I know. I won't win, bro. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, you know, you're going to win, but I won't win. The whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It feel good to win. Yeah, when you're yeah. winning, everything. It's the that's stuff right. that's a problem when you're winning is, is – wait, hold on. How you say it? When you're losing, everything a problem. Yeah. When like you're winning, it ain't, it ain't yeah. really much. Yeah, I say, some of the stuff gets sweeped on the rug sometimes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know – you can laugh about it in the meetings, and, yeah, you know, for sure. that it feels good, bro. But yeah. I, I Boston say, College game, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. You know, you see what happened the next week. Yeah, came up, went to Clemson and won. So, you know, it's it's definitely uh, y'all y'all would definitely do it. You know, you just got they say you got to keep putting the work in. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna come overnight. Just just because we won last year, don't mean you know this year gonna be the same. It takes work, but mm-hmm. no, I definitely appreciate you. You know, coming on here. You know, and definitely respect the game. And we looking forward to watching you this year, man. For so, sure, but thank you, bro. Appreciate you.